Okay, one of my complaints about the uh, the, the Sprinter is that. Oh yeah, move over. I'm like a little European delivery guy. What what did we just what did we just get? Oh, we got the rack system. The roof rack and the headliner for up there, and that. Oh, that beautiful wife of mine right there is very happy for the storage we're gonna have. UPS just dropped it off. Four boxes here. I haven't figured out what's in this one. That one's heavy. That one's super light. It's got the Flatline Van Company logo on it. That one right there is kind of the mama bear. Kind of heavy, kind of not. Roof rack and headliner set up right there. All about to get put in this beeping <laughs> Sprinter van. Yeah. So we just came from a rummage sale and that's when the Flatline Van Company stuff showed up. And my beautiful wife here is excited because she scored huge at the rummage sale, which supports our community. And then dad's excited because the Flatline Van Company roof rack and this headliner. Why are you excited about the headliner? I want to put all my stuff here. Yay! Oh, so it can fall on us when we're driving down the rough roads, <laughs> right? That's going to be fun. Maybe it'll give us a reason to wear the helmets. And then the headgear for our braces back in the old days. Remember that? <laughs> she no like my joke, man. Okay, here's a couple of admissions. I got the Flatline Van Company's standard roof rack because that seems to be the mama bear in terms of my budget limitations and what I need to put up on top of the roof rack. I'm still trying to stuff five kids and mom and dad in this van on a trip across the country. I didn't think the low profile was gonna meet my needs. And then the other thing is it just skirts by the factory air that's in the rear of this Sprinter van. I was a little concerned about it. It just looks like it's gonna make it, but I thought maybe I need to get something a little more beefy to handle a rooftop tent. What else was I, oh, I was gonna put a roof box up on there too from Thule. Still got that left over from the old Toyota Sienna. So that's what's going on. Plus I'm cheap. And what am I gonna do? Well, I am gonna look at some bison from the roof rack. I hope I can do that. Um, you mean you might be helping me today? Mm, come on, let's go. Rise and shine, buttercup. Is that a no? Is that a no? Come on, let's go. Gotta go install that roof rack. Oh, Dan. Oh. All right, all right. Wish me luck. I think I'm gonna attempt the impossible right now. The kids are in school, just about to get home. And I was thinking, maybe I could install that roof rack because we got a big surf safari coming up this weekend that just kind of popped in. Can I do it? I don't know. Here we go. Sprinter. Hi, Mercedes. How can I help? Shut up! You always interrupt though whenever I say your name. So, so the first part of this attempt is going to be that I take the three boxes. Two of them are very heavy, somewhat light. <laughs> Fallen out of the carrier, I see. Even my phone's uncooperative. Again, attempting the impossible, I'm going to go and take the Flatline Vanco roof rack and try to install it. One man before all the kids get home. Maybe part two will require their help, as it often does. We just got booked up to a little surf camp, San Clemente area, and I'm gonna need this roof rack. Something awful! Wish me luck. First things first, you must satiate the sheeps. That way they are all shh. They've reached a certain point of satiety? Satiated? Is that the word? I don't know. And the pig too, so you don't go oink oink the whole dang time you're trying to install this bad boy. Here we go. Okay, I just unboxed box number one. Oh look, an earwig. That's probably not from them. <laughs> That's part of the fairing, I believe. And there is the fairing right there. Crossbars. Behold, fine craftsmanship. Perfectly cut. <laughs> Flatline exhibiting skills in their shipping abilities. Look at all this stuff. So I had to go inside to the printer and print up the destructions because I was getting tired of reading those tiny little words on my phone. First thing you do is put in those rail nuts and then you start assembling the fairing assembly. For chance, these are the rail nuts. Up the ladder we go. Six rail nuts up the passenger side and eight on the driver's side. Look, I'm about to get invaded by little ones that just got home from the school bus. Hi, Mayor Mayor. Hi, Ray. I forgot my cat jacket. I couldn't find it at school. We will find it. Don't worry. Everything is okay. You could come back out and help me. You know, I'm having a hard time assembling this little bad boy. Whatever. Please. Don't put it past my nine-year-old daughter to help. She can help me like no other. She's got skills and a second set of hands would come in handy. Hope she comes back out. Please. Hello. Don't forget about me. I had a couple of moments where I'm like, I better call a professional. <laughs> 
So you put these through this fairing assembly, bolt on the inside, and then that nut, T-nut, on the outside, because we're gonna slide some 80-20 on there. See how I'm sliding this 80-20 onto this fairing assembly? Oh yeah, that's where those T-nuts come into play. I just gotta slide it a little more. So here's the fairing assembly. I slid the 80-20 onto those T-nuts, and there are the bolt heads. So all the way down, I worked it in. You only wanna loose, keep those things real loose so that they'll slide into that trap right there. And that's how you marry those two. It's genius. This is what the quarter 20 flange heads look like. There's a flat washer and there's some nylock nuts in there. Number one downside of having an English Mastiff. She wants to check things out and she leaves a little mark everywhere she goes. Thanks a lot, Clover. First little quality control issue is that I have 14 of the 16 short quarter 20 without the flange. Those are the ones that I use to attach the fairing over there. And those are also the ones that I use to attach the 8020 onto the spoiler here. So I've had to go without a couple there's one and there's the other. Got them pretty much where they need to be. And I feel pretty confident that I can afford to not have that one and that one since I have the structural integrity of those two. Next uh, quality control issue, um, and they are taking care of it, is I got two of the same side. Well, maybe I can still install it. I'm just gonna wait till FedEx delivers a new one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call it a day today. But this is how far I've gotten so far. I did run into a missing part. Flatline Vanco is going to take care of that because they have awesome, awesome customer service. But it came from Oregon, so you know, it's not Switzerland. <laughs> they would never forget a nut or a bolt in Switzerland. So I was short two bolts, but I'm going to live with that. And uh, But you can see this glorious rack taking shape on the old Sprinter. Ooh, behold, so far. I love it. Day two, I jumped out of uh, finishing the rack yesterday because it was time for dinner and uh, I was a little perplexed by the Rubik's Cube elements of putting the rack together because I got two of the same side as far as that um, fairing bracket. So they're handling it. They're sending me the right ones. Um, but for now, ah, I'm feeding the sheep so they shut. Oh, I love these guys, but they're a little loud. You happy now? <laughs> That's you. Are you happy? No, I don't eat alfalfa. I'm not impressed. I'd rather have some of that uh, sweet feed you got. Hook me up. Isn't that little lamby cute? Bought myself some time by feeding the sheep and the pig. The other livestock, chickens don't make too much noise, so let's get to work. All right, so my son Kian is putting the uh, little plate bracket just above the ladder hatch to join the front to the back here you leave all these loose so that you can make adjustments with the um, crossbars and i still have this is kind of loose so that we can make adjustments with the crossbars we're also going to make some adjustments for the roof air so obviously there's not going to be a cross member right where that roof air is interfering now my son did the uh driver's side i'm doing the passenger side i'm actually acting as the officiant in case anybody wants to get married i am an official certified reverend <laughs> it's true, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be your efficient. But anyway, I'm acting as the marriage efficient here because I'm marrying the front to the back right here, as you can see with this bracket. Bracket goes on the inside, nuts and washers on the inside, and uh, the Allen head, the ones with the flange, avec le flange, as we say in France. Got the moving blanket on here so I don't damage the side of the van. It's coming together really well. I think Flatline did a pretty nice job just with the coating on it, and uh, and I love the design. It's gonna have a lot of places I can cinch stuff down. Woo! Here's another pro tip. Wear good, sturdy-soled boots if you're spending any time on a ladder, because it don't feel so good on the old pieds, man. The feet are not happy. My dogs are barking by the end of a couple of hours on a ladder. All right, my teenage heartthrob son is now putting on the ladder hatch, since uh, we're gonna put a ladder. We're putting this van together piece by piece door that fits in there perfectly. Don't scratch the paint, you I know, idiot. No, it doesn't fit. You need help, don't you? Coming right now. It's not fitting in there, according to you. Well, All right, let's see. Fine. Let's see. So you see those holes, right? Yeah. So everything backs out. <sighs> Kian said we were tall enough to be able to see down into these nuts that are in the tracks, but he's not so right. 
<laughs> so uh, I'm trying to eyeball it and just feel it and say a little prayer. And I consider fasting. So close. Eureka! I think I've got that thing threaded in there. <laughs> it's funny because Flatline Van Co, I'm a big fan, but they come out of Oregon and you know, we're here, we got a little friendly competition between California and Oregon. Unfortunately, we're both guilty of the same thing because California is the land of the fruits and nuts and Oregon's, you know, kind of a, it seems that whoever packed this box of hardware missed a couple of spring washers because I didn't have those, but I did get the ladder hatch um, bolted down into those tracks. So it's loose for now. Once we cinch everything down, it'll sit pretty, but someday we can get Barbie a, a nice ladder here. But today is not that day. Okay, so I snuck up here. I brought the uh, rear spoiler up here and uh, it just takes these bolts with the flange. So I'm gonna throw this in here loosely. We'll see how this goes. I'm gonna lift this up, one man band these. Whoa. I found the hole, here's the rear spoiler. First bolt, woo! Just hand tightening these down here so you can see. Got one more to go here into the threaded part of that big fat cross member that the uh, crossbar is sitting on. Those have threads inside there. Thank goodness. Can you imagine trying to get a nut in there? That would suck. Here we go. Hand tightened. Boom. Let me show you what Kian's doing here. He's tightening down the cross members and we're using those, um, those flanged bolts. You really want everything loose. I realize that is a pro tip because Keep them loose and then you can squeeze the crossbars in there. And uh, we're gonna get that tightened down and then we're gonna actually call this a rack for now because we're waiting for a piece to come back from Flatline. There was a little bit of an error in shipping. No problem though. Are you dirty? Nasty. All right, you ready to catch? Here it comes. Throwing it over the expensive van. Catch. Oh, that was so close. Get it threaded. Okay, don't yell at me. Down to the box of hardware. Dun, 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 dun. Where is that box of hardware? I lost it. And there it is. Oh, right in there. Creeper. Bolt delivery in progress. Whoop. Whoa. Behold the bolts. Oh, George Washington. Here's the dramatic slow move across Kian's dirty arm as we descend on the bolt. Threading it. Did you tighten it? You're not supposed to tighten them here. I didn't tighten it that tight. Not too tight. Okay, good. So you'll see along these rails, there's these two bolts that are kind of close together. That's where you put the crossbars. Tightening these guys down. And if you're worried about these backing out, a little dab of Loctite blue, not the permanent stuff. Safety third. What is lovely beast in the distance? Oh, really? Gosh, you just got so dirty. Hey, Clover, look how dirty you just got. And look at Kai. Great Dane, English Mastiff. Are we gonna make some Daniffs? I don't know. He doesn't want me dinner. My intrepid 16 year old son is now tightening down the bolts with the flange to the cross members to marry these up with the big rails on the standard flatline roof rack. It's already made this van look so much cooler. Like literally, it's grown a pair. I don't know if I can call a Barbie anymore. What size Allen wrench is that there, Ken? Is them's tight? We'll get them's tight. Okay, do your best. That's all you can do. Father son project here, getting the roof rack so that he has an alternative place to live. <laughs> but we are gonna put a rooftop tent on here and that's one of the reasons we went with the standard because it's got a little more beef to it and I just think it's got a little more options. We're gonna take this on a surfing camp out and we're gonna stack it full of surfboards and uh, other beach items for this trip this weekend. Um, so we're gonna get this as tight and ready as we can for the trip this weekend and then Flatline is going to be so kind as to correct their error and send us the proper bracket. 
Bracket. You like the name Bracket? Do you ever carry a ratchet? Okay. A hatchet, yeah. You know. A hatchet, but not a ratchet. <laughs> so uh, Kian was just asking me, once we get the uh, cross members type, then we can start tightening these anchor points to the track. Well, we got the option of the uh, already installed factory tracks, and this uh, roof rack is marrying up to it. Quite lovely. Oh, the moon. Whoop. Oh, wow. Check out the moon. So cross members are getting tightened down and then those bad boys right off in the distance are gonna be ready to tighten down. The other cool thing about this beast is that these have these L-track points up and down the rails, all these little connection points. I mean, you can throw plywood up here. You can put a platform with some really nice teak. Uh, you could do a rooftop tent, surfboards. You name it. And I don't want to emasculate any of you, but any of you that are pondering buying this rack and having a professional install it, it's probably a good idea if you got no skills, but could you possibly find any motivation with the fact that that kid, 16 years old, is installing the rack? Pretty much could do it by himself if he wanted to. Um, with dad's guidance, of course, it's a great excuse for us to get out here and, and uh, develop some great lifelong memories. But it's also proof that anybody with a couple of wrench and skills can do it. And uh, I mean, we've <laughs> we've been kind of doing it off and on. I we were interrupted by dinner, babysitting, and oh, it was windy yesterday. Today the gardeners came, and my rancheros made all kinds of noise. And uh, but you know we're we're getting it done. Oh, and the other thing that has interrupted this process is the fact that I don't have the right. Uh, fairing bracket which is uh, unfortunate but we can live without it right now we're gonna get this rack in service and then uh, flatline is jumping and expediting shipping to correct this problem which is very nice I mean they really do handle their beeswax nicely so I just hope that you see the inspiring possibilities that you could probably install this my fifth grader maybe not so much but my 11th grader, he got this all day long. Go forward and conquer. Adapt, improvise, destroy the enemy. <laughs> the enemy being your goal. Another pro tip is moving blanket to keep your van from getting scratched up. As you can see, moving blanket. Somehow we have like a thousand moving blankets and it's not from picking them up on the side of the freeway because there's a ton of them there too. But uh, anyway, yeah, moving blanket keeps the ladder from burning a hole in the old uh, paint job. That would not be good. Dad would cry. You want to see dad cry? Scratch that paint job with a ladder. <laughs> this is where his joke is not so funny. <sighs> Don't do it. <laughs> I'm marrying the front rail to the back rail now little bracket. The bracket on the passenger side is clearly bigger than the driver's side because the driver's side is working above the ladder hatch. The ladder hatch is its own unit. It's got it's held down by the bigger bolts into the track. I'll be showing you that in a second because we're going to cinch that down. But uh, I'm just tightening this up so that the front rail is married to the back rail and it lines up. The machining is really nice on these. I like the finish and I like the way uh, it lines up and it's got a little texture to it in the powder coat I believe feels rock solid especially once you start cinching things down oh I see a gap you best fix that boy see that gap we're not we we're not rolling with that boy go fix it now run there he goes he's running great Jane's after him could be bloody a boy that's the way to hop to it. Uh, what are you doing, Caleb? Not on the stucco. Caleb's marring my stucco and Kian's coming up here. I don't trust this. You don't? So we're basically trying to eliminate that gap and that's Kill. important. Push this thing forward. Because we want this to look like one continuous piece. Right. There you go, hold, you it, hold it there. It. It's, I don't know why it's springing back, but hold it there, Caleb, as hard as you can. And there goes Kian. And, so easy, a 16 year old can do it. What? Oh my gosh, check him out. Your nut stuck? The booger, but it's not. <laughs> that was like the one appropriate joke you could probably say in, in family. Good job. Good job, son. You good? Is it lining up nice? What's the next step now that you got all the cross members cinched down? Tighten these. And what size are they? 
seven thirty seconds. It would be a really cool viral video if you fell right now. Isn't that what you teenagers are all into right now? Is doing these like ten second viral videos? Maybe if you fall, I'll put it in slow motion and put some romantic music to it. So there's the ladder hatch bolt he's about to put in there or tighten it down. They're already threaded once or twice. That one was kind of a bare to thread because we weren't using a step ladder. I usher it into its best spot. There you go. Now they're fighting over how wow. tall they are. So who's 4'11", Kian? Dad, this one moved back again. It did, oh my gosh, man, these kids. But he's trying his darndest to get that ladder hatch lined up. And uh, you know, sometimes a little trial and error. Like I said earlier, it's, we're mostly an error family, but we're comfortable with that. Um, so once he gets that That's cinched not, down, hopefully we have a the ladder hatch is lined up. We have a problem. It's not working without the washer. It's not working without the washer because no, it wants it's to... it's fully tightened, but it's still sliding. Oh, it's fully tight? We yep. need the washer. Okay, so another problem with our Oregonian brothers who put this little hardware box together is they may have, there may have been some, I don't know, weed smoking or something because they missed a couple of bolts and they missed a couple of washers and they missed the right side on the flan on the uh, fairing bracket but you know Californians are forgiving Oregon is a great state of mind but apparently yeah. not like Switzerland not exact that does not work that does not work it so we must need work. to get the lock washers Yes. because it's basically the bolts all the way into the nut and now we are having a spatial problem so we'll have to get that uh, ladder hatch figured out somehow. That line also gave us the allen wrenches that are appropriate for this uh, job so that's nice. Bolts that are going into the T-nuts along the roof rail holding the whole contraption to the van. Thank you Flatline, nice touch. I gave it the old rattle test here. It's passing. Nice. Okay, so the good news about Having a little ranch is I also have a little hardware store. So I've picked up a couple of my own washers because uh, the kit that Flatline sent me was just shy by a couple. So we're gonna give these a shot to fill in the space so that uh, ladder hatch, which is right here, can be cinched down for this wonderful adventure we're about to get on. Ian's getting in there for the last two bolts of tightening and then we're ready to go. There's the ladder hatch, I have it slightly recessed. And, but it's tight with the two ranch washers and there's a good look at it no fairing at this point and oh look dad did the dad move right there look at the dad move leaving the allen wrench in the bowl so to those of you who are wondering yeah i went and got it there she is i didn't leave it up on the roof no tools left behind <laughs> what's happening here just for visual reference this is what i would use but I'm gonna take this uh, rack on a couple of test drives and a little surf camp out. And then I'm going to see how she's riding and decide whether or not I'm going to apply some of this to keep things secure up on the deck. All right, there she is. Dirty, Tannerite gray, 2021 Mercedes Sprinter with a flatline Vanco roof rack no fairing it still looks mean man look at that look at the way they cut that line right there like an arrow piercing the air and i just took it for a test drive we went about 70 miles an hour uh, according to my instruments and uh and we didn't have any weird harmonic hums so as soon as that bracket comes in the fairing goes on but I think she looks better already. And now it's time to clean the church. Deed. Guess what came in the mail super quick? The fairing side bracket, the correct one. Flatline Vanco made good in their promise and they sent it so fast. I, I almost think they used some kind of a transporter or teleportation module because this thing came the next day by 10 in the morning. And I think I communicated with them in the afternoon the day before. So it wasn't in time for me to get it up and running for my surf trip with the family, but it's here now. So I'm just gonna throw it up there. And then we got ourselves a case closed on this fine roof rack. Woo, thank goodness. I tightened all this stuff down and now I'm installing the newly shipped side bracket for the fairing. All it is is the flat washers, the nylocks, and those flanged 
bolts easy peasy fact of the matter is, is the top of my van is still dusty and stuff because of this desert mountain we live on and we've had some crazy winds this year so i'm going to use some of this 3d final touch it's got a little silicone in it that kind of uh take the dust off of there because where the gasket is keeps the fairing from being a hard surface against a hard surface and it's a nice little rubber gasket uh, eventually that's going to scratch that bad boy up. So I'm going to try to get as much of the grit out of there with a little just quick detail on that one top area where the fairing comes in contact with the van. Absolutely filthy up here. I ain't going to lie. Desert Mountain is dusty. It's no joke. We've had winds, but look, this stuff just cleans really nice. So let's get the grit out of there so that gasket doesn't turn into sandpaper. Look at that fine hole alignment. Does it get any better? Yes, it ha helps if you have a friend, but I've been able to do this with a moving blanket and patience. First bolt, dun, 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 dun. second bolt, ah, oh, like butter. And tighten that guy in there. Fairing bracket bolts in. All right, so we've got the uh, fairing bracket on the passenger side, bolted in, hand tightened. I took the liberty of using a spring washer on the top one just because I figure this fairing is going to get buffeted by the evil winds of life on the freeway. And so I figured, well, at least one of these will have a little, well, a chance. A chance to live a long life without backing out. Because I bet you there's a lot of vibration and hostile environments that these little bolts go through quick pro tip on certain things i've noticed that the paint comes off when you start putting bolts in that is not an issue there because those are fixed bolt points but when you start to explore places to put your cross members in these lovely long tracks which make fitting a uh, a tule roof box or roof tent up there possible because you're moving it from different places to accommodate different accessories on your roof you're gonna leave a little marky mark like the funky bunch right there kind of a bummer but you can touch it up with some paint you can always touch it up with some paint so don't cry dry your eye all right it is a thing of beauty it's great to have those fairing brackets and this thing fully installed and donezo there's even a little stash spot you could stuff i don't know towels or a little bb gun or something down in there underneath the fairing it's kind of a cool little pocket we're back from the surf trip and we didn't have that front fairing so i'm excited to see how this is going to feel and sound on the road and kick the air over any kind of cargo i put there all right that's a wrap for this flatline vanco standard roof rack install and semi review i really have to take it out on the road to give you my true impressions but even without the fairing on our little surf safari and camp out this weekend, I abused her and I put a lot of stuff up on there and I didn't hear any extra wind noise. And uh, it was just awesome having the cargo space for wet and sandy and big and bulky items. So, so far it's a win. It's aluminum, so I have my complaints about that, but boy, is it light and easy to work with. So if your parents didn't let you play with an erector set, they totally did you an injustice because you could do this yourself. I mean, with the help of my nine-year-old daughter and my two teenage boys and a couple of days and interruptions with babysitting, dinner, homework, uh, I'm getting tired, all kinds of stuff. Well, we're, uh, it took me some time to get it. Plus, I had a, a shipping snafu because those boys in Oregon, well, they know how to party and sometimes they forget how many screws they put in the box and they send them to you. But that's all good. I forgive and maybe you should too. But anyway, give Flatline Vanco a chance because they do make a good product. The fit is awesome. The finish is impressive. I've just already scratched it up a little bit and that's my fault. I'm sorry, I should learn from that. Are you reviewing my rack? Are you, <clears throat> hopefully you learned something from this rack review. Hey, wait, are you reviewing my rack while well, you're reviewing that rack? I'm reviewing this rack. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and share it with anybody you think uh, would get something, would glean some information from this amazingly outstanding review of this fine product. And uh, go for the ride with me as I put this little Barbie together with piece by piece. Eventually, she'll be a real adventure van like the big boys. But for now, she's a 12-passenger van for my family of five kids and beautiful wife. And we can still go on adventures like the big boys do with the side ladders and all the toys. 
But at the same time, I've got to make her capable of those trips across the country and to the national parks and doing all the cool stuff that really educates our kids. Send me some feedback, comment below because I like to create a two-way conversation where we both learn whatever floats your boat. We'll talk to you next time. For now, that's a wrap with the Flatline Vanco review of the standard roof rack. Till next time, so long. Thanks for all your help. You're welcome, Dad. You're welcome, Dad. You're welcome, Dad. I love you. I'm sorry if I didn't help more. You like the roof rack? I didn't know you were fluent in snort. Well, wait a minute. Yes, I did. You're quite a beast.